Hey everybody, welcome to another video. I am Mike B. And today I'm going to be debunking, hopefully very quickly, this really annoying and just ignorant statement that is constantly posted in my comments. It's, a, it's an almost daily occurrence regarding military surplus firearms. And it just seems to be this stupid sentiment that just adds to this generational animosity bullshit that I'm not really a fan of. And that's going to be the whole, when, the, when all the boomers die, the... The surplus, mar the military surplus fire market will finally be flooded, you know, and will, prices will come down magically. You know, it's all the boomers' fault. Well, I'm here to tell you a few points that I have about why it's not entirely true, and it's really dumb to think that way. Uh, this is my opinion, but take from it what you will. So, first of all, I'm just going to go from a little bit of personal experience. Um, boomers, in my opinion, are not the sole cause, if not even a you know, contributing cause even worth mentioning to the prices being where they're at now for military surplus and for the lack of supply. Everybody assumes that the boomers, you know, the people that were born between 1945 and 19, I guess, 64 or 65, somewhere like that. Um, all the boomers have these massive hordes of surplus guns and then they went out and bought more when the panic buying happened in 2012, which was asinine. It was that was probably the worst panic buying I've seen. That was the quickest panic buying. And this year in 2020, it's been more gradual. But um, yeah, 2012 was insane for the panic buying and then into 2013. So, but when I was there, I was in my early 20s at that point when that kicked off. And the people that I saw hoarding the most were people who were my age into their 50s. So 20 to 50. The boomers really weren't the ones running out and hoarding stuff. They were hoarding 22 ammo. I did see that, but that's not military surplus firearms. No, it was the people that were uh, basically the AR fanboys that, you know, all that old R or surplus junk, that moist nugget rifle sitting there at the sh on the shelf for $70. It's a piece of shit because it's so cheap and it's Russian. It's this old Soviet commie gun. And then when all the ARs and all the tactical shit dried up, they figured, oh, I need guns. Obama's going to take my guns, blah, blah, blah. And then they started hoarding this stuff and realizing that, hey, the ammo's cheap. It's actually an effective rifle. It's really fun, and it's got historic value. I can flip it for 10 bucks more than I paid for it. That's what I saw in 2012. It was mostly younger people. It wasn't the boomers that were going out and hoarding shit. So, uh, and the reason for that, I think, is boomers have been able to collect military surplus firearms for a lot longer and at a lot lower prices. And if people were into that, which I know a lot of boomers who have been into it, for, you know, since the 60s when they were young... And they just like military surplus firearms. They have a vast collection, but it's over, it's over the span of like 40 years of collecting. You would expect them to have a decent amount at, you know, the prices that they were paying. And uh, so that's why some of them, some of those people have really extensive collections. It's not, they're not necessarily hoarding. It's not hoarding just because you have something and you don't want to sell it for cheap. Um, it's not hoarding. It's I have a bunch of stuff that I have that I enjoy owning. I'm not hoarding it because I didn't go out and buy it specifically for that. So it's the same case with most of the people that I know who are boomers who have extensive collections. And um, so then we'll get into kind of the more more of the bullshit that kind of adds on to this whole thing in the comments of when they die, their snowflake libtard kids will turn the guns in and they'll just get destroyed. That's one of the options that apparently people have laid out for everybody in a certain age group's kids to do. Um, not everyone who exists is a leftist anti-gunner or even a right-wing anti-gunner. Those do exist. Um, relax, okay? M most families will probably actually just sell them on the cheap, either at, you know, an estate sale if they don't, if they don't want the guns. So I'm going to get there in a second. Um, they'll either sell them at an estate sale or to a dealer or an auction house. If they really don't want them, it's not like they're going to be, oh my God, have the police come here and melt all these down right away. That's a very slim number of people, if any, if there's a dollar to be made. I mean, families, even if they're anti-gun, they'll be like, well, hey, we'll just sell these and we'll make money and cash out. Now, the most likely scenario that is happening and does happen and has been happening for centuries now with any kind of artifact that your uh, family owns is that most of these firearms will probably stay in the family, if not the direct family, extended family. So that's really the reality of that whole, you know, libtard snowflakes destroying them. And it's not like they're just going to, you know, say, hey, my grandfather or my father died, please take all these guns for free. It's just not, it's simply not realistic to think that way at all. And 
here's the thing. The number of people who do, do do that at an estate sale or whatever, who do sell for really cheap and you're able to get a good deal in person and whatnot, that number is slim to none nowadays because the internet exists. It, they do still exist. I know people who have gotten very lucky. I've gotten lucky at a couple of estate sales, not recently, but back in the day. Uh, even back then, I got them for these some of these surplus guns for a lot cheaper than what they were going for at that point. So, you know, 50 bucks for a Mosin got 9130 with a bayonet and cleaning kit and all that stuff. That was cool. That existed. Um, and they still do. But the most likely scenario, if they are going to sell them, is not just, they're not going to go through all the work themselves. It's a lot easier for the bereaved to go, hmm, that auction house says that they'll take 10% commission and they'll do all the work and they'll list all that stuff and then I get all the money for whatever that is. That's a good thing. Or this dealer, this local dealer says he'll buy all of them. I'll sell it to him for cheap. Well, guess what? The dealers are going to buy cheap and sell high. And I don't blame them one damn bit because that's what capitalism is about. You buy cheap or you, you buy below retail, you sell for a profit and you expand your business. I don't fault the dealers. That's the name of the game. And it's a lot easier for the family to sell it to an auction house or the dealers. So any way you look at it, let's, 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 let's just summarize this video and I'll end it. Hopefully I'm staying below 10 minutes and I'm not ranting too much. Every way you look at it. Okay. If the guns are destroyed, there goes a bunch of supply. Prices increase. Prices stay high. The guns stay in the family. The, the, the supply stays the same or becomes less because there's less guns on the market every day. And maybe they might cut them down and sporterize them. Who knows? What does that equal? High prices. Again, selling to a dealer or an auction house. The dealer is going to sell high for profit. And people do pay really stupid prices at auctions nowadays. What does that lead us to? High prices. So here in conclusion, if by some miracle... You get lucky and happen to find an estate sale where they've got a wall of military surplus firearms and they've got $50 to $100 on each one of them because they just want to get rid of them. You'll be in the extreme minority of people who that happens to. And um, you sh in that event, you should definitely be one of those people who's very smart and has some cash saved up in case that very rare phenomenon happens to you. So... In conclusion, don't get your hopes up. That's not going to happen. It's not just going to be this miraculous thing. I hate it when people deal in absolutes. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. Yeah, well, only morons and very immature. And um, uh, what, what other kind of insult can I throw out? Uh, just immature, I think, I think it is. Not really a logical person would think that, okay, in absolutes, boomers die, cheaper guns, more guns. Because they're hoarding them all. That's not the solution. It's way more complex than that. And it's actually going to require you to do a little bit more thinking on your own to come up with this conclusion like I have and observe. So yeah, bottom line, don't get your hopes up. That's not going to happen. I don't see the prices coming down. Again, I'll say it again and everybody's going to be like, we're supply and demand. I don't, I know, I understand that. I'm not dumb. The only way that military surplus prices on firearms will maybe either stay the same or start trickling down is if the demand does not outweigh the supply, i.e. you don't pay $400 for a round receiver refurbed Mosin Nagant that only a few years ago was $70. And I get that, you know, surplus firearms increase in value, but that was one of the biggest hikes I've seen in, in that. Going from $70 overnight in 2012 to $160, which is more than twice what it was going for, and now they're three, $400. And that's not, that's not that long. That's um, seven, eight years of that doing that. That's, that's, if you go for the inflation percentage wise, it's a lot faster and, and steeper than most of the other military surplus firearms. So until, until people stop will, be, be being willing to pay that much and then they start buying newer firearms or whatnot, the prices are not going to go down. They'll either stay the same or in the realistic event or most realistically, they're going to, they're going to increase. So that myth is bullshit. I'm sick of hearing it. So don't post it in the fucking comments anymore because it's just simply not true. It's dumb, it's ignorant, you need to do a little bit more research and fucking relax. Stop blaming boomers for your misfortune. We could get into a whole other topic of how they might have caused that and contributed to that, but in this particular case, it is what it is. Younger people and gun owners are their own worst enemy when it comes to military surplus firearm collecting. So, we'll leave it at that. Um, you, can, you can disagree with me all you want, I don't care. I, I'm pretty sure I'm uh, pretty close to the facts on this one. So, yeah. Now, we get past the angry part. If you made it this far, leave a comment below saying you made it this far. And also, if you haven't yet, if you're new to the channel or whatnot, um, consider supporting my work via Patreon or becoming a channel member. 
that allows me to expand my content into places that I otherwise wouldn't be able to fund just funding out of pocket. This year has been great. I've been able to do a lot more content than I would have been able to do just funding out of pocket, which is awesome. Been able to get a lot of firearms, going to be going out and doing range videos. And your financial support helps with ballistic tests, uh, range videos, because ammo is not getting any cheaper, and just historical videos that I, I like to actually teach with, you know, using tangible items like this. It helps me learn and helps me convey this. Um, so yeah, and then five bucks a month or more on either support method gets you into my Discord server, which is pretty fun. We have a lot of cool conversations in there. I'm learning a lot and um, we have a lot of fun in there too. So yeah, financially, it really helps with crowdfunding to be able to do more content that I love to do, but just couldn't just funding out of my own personal money. So consider doing that. If you can't support the channel financially, I totally get that. That's totally fine. Uh, just make sure you hit the like button on this video and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And then sharing the video is a really great way to support this channel. Um, sharing the video gets this out, gets the message out. People that may not know about this stuff that are kind of interested in it might actually become interested in it by watching my content and hopefully learn something. So sharing the video really helps out. So I would appreciate that if you can't do that, uh, support the channel financially. Anyway, thank you for watching so much. Um, don't get too nasty in the comments. This is something that... Uh, I don't want to create more generational animosity. That's not the goal of this. I'm actually trying to dissolve some of it and kind of dilute it a little bit so that people stop hating on people just because of their age and what circumstances they grew up in. So thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next video.